सूरज की पहली किरण के साथ दिन की शुरुआत कीजिए सुबह का मंगल प्रभात आपको शुभ हो सुबह सुबह हो खुशियों का मेला न लोगों की परवाह न दुनिया का झमेला पंछियों का संगीत हो और मौसम अलबेला मुबारक हो आपको ये खूबसूरत सवेरा हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहे रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ Hibiscus fever is back. FAA explores new energy options. And Pacific produce for international markets. Good evening and welcome to FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshini. It's that time of the year again when thousands visit the capital city for the annual Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus Festival. Fondly known as the mother of all festivals or just Hibiscus, the festival was officially opened this afternoon. Shanal Shivan reports. Fears of the usual rainy hibiscus weather was put to rest today as thousands turned up for the 2013 Vodafone Hibiscus Festival opening parade. And of course the main attraction, contestants vying for this year's Hibiscus Awards. Organizers could not have asked for a better start to the week-long celebrations of the mother of all festivals. People from all walks of life, young and the old, came out in numbers to be part of this parade, adding to the array of colors along the streets of the capital. <laughs> this is an event not just for Suva, but the whole country looks forward to. There's so much organized beginning tonight. The rides and food stalls were already in full swing from yesterday. The reigning king and queen were as excited as everybody else. I'm, I'm very excited for the girls this year, for all the contestants. I'm excited for Suva because I know this year's hibiscus is going to be even bigger and better than last year. And it's slightly bittersweet giving it over, but I'm ready to move on to other things. And um, yeah, just really happy for all the excitement that the festival has in store for the girls this year. Well, Hibiscus is the biggest festival in the South Pacific and it shows. Everyone's here in full force. The colors out. It's that time of the year again. I'm looking forward to seeing how this year goes. As for this year's contesting kings and queens, this was the perfect welcome by the people of Suva. It's really, really fun. Look at everyone. They're so excited. It's going to be a great week to come. Wow, this is just something else. Uh, Hibiscus is starting off. And basically, I wish and I hope this week will be an amazing week. This is a milestone, only uh, not only for me, but uh, for my whole family. I would also like to uh, thank the supporters out here. It's really a privilege to be part of the High Business this year. Vodafone Fiji sponsorship manager Linga Gikusuva is promising a good week ahead. Well, you can see today is the first day of the event, and I can tell you, as you walk around the park, as you walk around Suva. You can feel the excitement. Uh, people are getting ready. I mean, look at the crowd that has come out tonight. It shows that the, um, the feeling of uh, togetherness and to be part of the festival. I'll see you at the ground. Special Administrator Suva Chandu Maria at the opening of the event reminded the public that safety during the week is paramount. The opening of this year's Hibiscus Festival has been blessed with the beautiful weather. The atmosphere is electrifying and this is the perfect start for the week-long activities. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Every child has a right to tertiary education. This is one of the reasons government is looking at revamping the current education loan scheme. Epeli Tukuwasa reports. Government has put in place a new $2.2 million tertiary education loan scheme for students who can't afford higher education. The right to education and the ambition to pursue it is not only something that should depend on the family's ability to pay tuition fees. The government believes that education should be readily available to all Fijians, wherever they live, 
and whatever the circumstances. Government is looking at pumping a lot of money into the scheme. I'm currently looking at revamping the current loan and scholarship scheme so that any Fijian who wants a tertiary education can get one. So no Fijian student who gains university entrance will be prevented from taking up their place because they can't afford it. Mboyne Marama says this scheme has also been prompted by the need for more skilled tradespeople. He says government has embarked on a major program with the Fiji National University to train a new generation of tradespeople and farmers. Many of the young people in the first intake come from poor families. So it was very inspirational to see them embrace the opportunity that they've been given. The enthusiasm to the poverty doesn't have to be a barrier. Success. Prime Minister of Orangam Bain Marama says the new constitution, which will be unveiled soon, will make education a right not just for primary and secondary school students but also for higher education. Epili Tuguasa, FBC News. Power has been fully restored following a major power blackout across Viti Levu at around 5 a.m. today. The Fiji Electricity Authority says the blackout was due to the failure of a generating set at the Kinoya power station. The authority earlier warned that this could happen as it is in the process of replacing its transformers. Confirmation was received minutes ago that electricity has been restored to all affected areas. The Fiji Electricity Authority is carrying out a feasibility study for hydropower dams. This is all in, in an effort to save money by turning to renewable energy. With the Kapratap reports. Last year, the Fiji Electricity Authority spent $105 million on diesel fuel. Although it was far less than the previous year, renewable energy is something that the authority is seriously considering. We have identified two projects, but uh, we expect independent power producers to come and develop them. One of them is the Wailoa Downstream Project. This is further down Wailoa Power Station. And the other one is what we call the Galiwana Project. Uh, which is uh, on the upper reaches of Nandarivatu scheme. While FEA currently looks after two hydro dams, one in Monasavu and one in Nandarivatu, the future dams will be operated by independent power suppliers. But we have called for uh, independent power producers to submit their bids because we want them to come and develop the projects, invest in the projects and then sign a power purchase agreement with FEA to sell electricity to FEA for the next 20 years. We have call for expressions of interest. We have got a couple of two or three serious uh, bidders and at the present stage we are evaluating them. Wailoa and Galiwana are not the only sites FEA is looking at. The power supplier has also been looking at places in Nava for possible hydroelectricity generation. Uh, also we have started collecting data on the upper Navua river scheme. Uh, and we need to have ample rainfall data for the next five years to determine the hydro potential. So that will take some time. It goes without saying that renewable energy is the preferred way to go, not just for a cleaner environment, but one that could save the FEA millions of dollars. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The second phase of a regional program aimed at assisting Pacific countries gain access to new markets for products with commercial potential was launched last night. The Pacific Horticulture and Agricultural Market Access Program aims to develop Pacific produce in international markets. Shanal Shivan has more. The Pacific Horticulture and Agricultural Market Access Program, or FAMA, is an Australian government-funded initiative which sees an injection of 30 million Australian dollars. The Australian Minister Councillor for International Development says the Australian government is pleased to invite Pacific countries in foreign trade. The Australian government, working with our partners, understands the role that agriculture plays in the daily lives of the people of the Pacific. So we're really pleased to be investing 30 million Australian dollars over six years to assist Pacific Island countries develop new markets for their products and actually build and maintain existing export pathways through the farmer program. Through the program, several new markets have been opened up. This includes Fiji's fresh ginger export to Australia. Farmer has helped strengthen export pathways for, papa, for papaya and eggplant from Fiji. And I have been informed that for Fiji alone, there are works in progress for yet more new products. Papaya and breadfruit to the United States of America, we to New Zealand, 
and frozen vegetables to Papua New Guinea. Once access has been gained into the international market, this second phase will develop necessary skills and systems for exports. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Just ahead, Eid in the Park, a success yet again. You can join us on The Breakfast Show every weekday from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. right here on Today FM. That's right. Nai wasa ningaw na niwa katara, waka bina bina katara. Bula, oya wasa la bilawa. Do ba taki yaw may na diwa kina tini karo na kaloko na single po ni mo niti kina waka rumbuka. Kako ni walata na no musui ni sarisari. Na kaisa mo riyan dolo loma, leo ni wani ni nao. O mgori kede may na diwa kina tini karo na kaloko na single po ni mo niti kina waka rumbuka. Ena Bula FM, namban dua ena sere. Welcome back to FBC News. Now, the Fiji National Provident Fund and the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority have started their joint roadshow with the old capital, Levuka. It creates awareness on both institutions' roles and collects applications for the new joint ID cards. Mika Longa reports. The first round of the FNPF FERCA Roadshow is targeting 250,000 members of the fund and the tech department and encourages non-members to join. 750,000 is the number of registered taxpayers. The membership that we've got is 250,000. So immediately you see there's a gap of about uh, 500,000. And this also will enable the fund to target these people to come in and be members of our voluntary scheme. The roadshow will be at Suva's Hibiscus Festival next week and members are urged to register and collect their joint IDs. As you know, with any, when we roll out certain things, there's always teething problems. We've been, no, we've been sorting out those teething problems now, but I think we've, uh, we've sorted all those matters out. So you get your card immediately uh, once you go through that process. The ID card will only show the text identification number or TIN to prevent anyone from defrauding members of their money. The number of the FNPF uh, membership is also on the card, but it's only visible when you place it under viol uh, ultraviolet light. Uh, it's, uh, that's for security reasons. The FNPF FERCA Roadshow will move to other centers around the country, beginning with Sabu Sabu next month, then Nambasa and Nambawalu. They will also be traveling to the west, starting from Rakiraki. Mikolonga, FBC News. It's a huge relief for parents and students for more than 15 villages in Rewa. A new school block and classroom was opened yesterday at Rewa District School in Lomani Koro, Rewa, thanks to the Prime Minister's office. Epelito Kuwasa reports. <laughs> This new facility opened by the Prime Minister Wurenge Mbanimarama is a definite boost to education in the area. You have all heard me say that we are building a new and better Fiji. Well, education is the cornerstone of our nation's future. And each and every one of our students is a building block of the new future and the new Fiji that we are striving to achieve. One based on equality and merit. Mbainimorama says government is making it a priority to upgrade school facilities wherever they can, this being their latest project. For parents of Rewa District School, the new facilities will greatly improve and boost their children's education. We are really happy and thankful to the government of the day for assisting us with the new facilities which will help our children. Rewa District has on numerous occasions been used as an evacuation centre in times of disasters. We always come to this school for evacuation and this new school block will help us in time of natural disaster. The new school block and classroom cost over a hundred and ninety thousand dollars. Epeli Tukuasa, FBC News. Fiji Broadcasting Corporation's Eid in the Park was a success again this year. People of all religions flocked at Nosori Syria Park to be part of the event. This is the fifth year for FBC to host Eid in the Park. People didn't only get a chance to meet their radio personalities, but to also shop around and enjoy the tasty savouries. The Fiji Muslim League was also distributing free survey. 
because FBC uh, takes part in these things and encourages these sorts of events so that there's more understanding between the communities and people know each other's uh, cultures and take part in each other's celebrations. So it's a good thing um, and the weather's really nice and uh, you know it's, um, it's a good time to, to, to be here to partake in, in, in the festivities. Ahead in sports, all the action from the BOG. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Aapki shadi hone wali hai. Paanch paanch bachche honge. Paanch paanch. Paanch paanch. Hi, I am Aapki Saheli Venu. Sunte rahenge Mitch FM. Main hu na 9 se 12 baje tak. Welcome to FPC Sports. The Fiji Football Association has come out strong on overseas base players after its council meeting today. Starting from next month, Fiji FA President Rajesh Patel has advised that they will not allow any overseas based footballer to play for local teams unless they possess a Fiji passport or hold dual citizenship. We need to get on homegrown players and everything. The government was insisting and, you know, uh, clamping down on the foreign players. So that way we are adhering to that too, to make sure that our homegrown players are given a chance. And this is uh, very positive. This is something that uh, we will uh, take into co consideration and it has been passed that only the IDC this year where the players were already contracted with the districts will be allowed to play. But starting National League season from this year, none of the foreign players will be allowed to play in that National League. First semi-final of the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants between Ba and Lambasa started a little over an hour ago at Govind Park in Ba. We take you live to Ba. At present, both teams are locked in the law. Finding Tuimasi, Tuimasi heading it down, no one there from the bar jersey as Korea Kapaanga turns and plays a long through pass again. Headed away by Chosavata Nemboli, David Muta keeps the pressure for Lambasa across from that far side. Here is Sonny Langivau, Langivau for Lambasa, shadowing him on that far side is Besukula. Well, the big boys of local football are battling it out at the BOG in bar. The future stars are having a tussle in the Tucker Secondary Schools competition in Lambasa. It's just as intense and with more teams this year, organizers are hoping that this tournament will contribute to the development of the game. Shelvin Chant has more. After hosting the first round of the BOG, Lambasa Subrail Park plays host to the secondary school's teams. Organizers are happy with the level of soccer that has been displayed. The level of soccer, we have seen some improvement coming from uh, last year. And uh, we have seen uh, even uh, Saraswati College, Trasa Secondary and Nukula College, they are really playing very good soccer at the moment. With 20 schools participating, there are plans to have a bigger tournament from next year. Uh, we need uh, other teachers need to get some more coaching uh, clinics and uh, they uh, like uh, we need uh, I think some more time to have the tournament uh, organized maybe in uh, like more days so that uh, the players have uh, enough rest but uh, at the moment due to uh, the number of days constraints uh, we only get uh, two days uh, from Minister of Education and there are two days uh, from the holidays. Organizers are hoping for more support they feel more should be done for future football reps. You can see that uh, Fiji Secondary Schools Football Association organized tournaments uh, have been uh, very good in uh, previous years and uh, a lot of stars have gone to represent uh, uh, from secondary school to the district level and even at national level. And uh, we ask the fans to come and really support uh, the boys playing here because they are the future stars of Fiji. The two-day tournament finished today with a new champion in the under-19 grade. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The Coke Zero Deans Trophy is heading down to the West for the first time after Ratu Navula defeated Queen Victoria School 1916 at the ANZ Stadium in Suva today. The Nandi School has become the first team from the West to win the under-18 grade and end the Southern mm -hmm. dominance. In the under-19, Maris defeated RKS while RKS thrashed Lelin 25-0 in the under-17. Maris beat Ratu Navula 16-3 in the under-16 final. QVS edged RKS 8-5 in the under-15 final, while Natambua defeated QVS 23-7 to win the under-14 grade.
Whoever's appointed the new Fiji Sevens rugby coach won't have much time before the start of the IRB World Series. A healthy number of applications are now with Rugby House and an announcement is expected just in time for the Fiji Water International Sevens in Suva. However, as Elena McDonald reports, the coach will only have a week before the Gold Coast Sevens in Australia kicks off. So who's next in line for Fiji Rugby's shortened code? Oliveretti Nderes confirmed reapplying, while it is believed that there are overseas coaches with impressive records putting their names in the hat. So the terms for everyone is good, uh, it depends on how well they presented uh, their, their CV and how their record looks. So uh, the overseas coaches uh, and also experiments, we will see how they fare against the criteria that the uh, assessment team will put up for determining the coach. The question on everyone's mind now is when will the new coach be named? It will probably be another month where the team will have to go through the shortlisting and then we'll assemble the team to interview. So I think within one month we should be able to announce the team from the closing data which uh, I've extended to next week. While the FRU is being thorough with selections, the bigger issue here is how much time the team will have to prepare. Time is of the essence. And let's hope there'll be enough for us to get a positive start to the new season. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Sova will meet Nandranga in the 2013 Digital Cup final after the Capitals scraped past Nandi 25-22 at the ANZ Stadium in Suva last night. It was a comeback for Suva after the Jet Setters led the home team 49 at half time. A penalty goal from Josefa Basundra proved to be thaw a thorn in Nandi's side for the Suva side to grab the win. Here's, here's the highlights. An influence on the flight of the ball as Donaldson chipped it nicely. He's kicked it. It doesn't look a bad one either and the flags go up. He's done it twice. The uh, corner flag in the background offer comes in uh, to Kumbu. To Kumbu makes ground up to the uh, five metre line, close to the goal line and they force their way over and the try is He's caught and down it comes, they try the open side. Out it comes and here's uh, Nandi in for the second. Egging him on, waiting for him to swing and uh, it is uh, successful. That's part of their tactic. And there it was Undre, manages to make it. An effort again, Nandi have recovered, they've got it, they take the short side. Out it comes, a dummy pass that's in there. Big, big, big effort from Takambu. Takambu goes forward and is uh, flung into touch just short of the goal line. Big effort as uh, we have, uh, the try is given. Pazandra, he steers it well. Scrum goes down, they lock shoulders. Silver working their way. Have they got it under control? It's Tonawai controlling it at number eight. The Nandi halfback will need to be careful. Silver managing to get Nandi back. They're managing to get right close to the line. And Tonawai with ball in hand. Does he get it in? The, the effort is there. And the try is scored. The try is scored by Kenatale. And Tonawai just tipped it to the side and uh, it was uh, Kenatali. Ravovo kicks and made certain of it. It's gone over. He moves forward. He kicks it. It's accurate enough and the flags go up. It's 25-22. Athletes and teams bound for the Pacific Mini Games in Wallace and Fortuna had their final team assembly this morning at the Playhouse in Suva. Police Commissioner Iwan Ine Valarua told the 108 athletes that they carried the nation's hope. The athletes were reminded of the task ahead and given their sports gear and uniforms for the mini games. Also today, the team's doctors and physiotherapists gave athletes their final medical checks. Fiji will be represented at a total of eight sports, including rugby sevens, athletics, weightlifting, volleyball, beach volleyball, sailing, paddling and taekwondo. The mini games start on September 2nd. The Athletics World Championship in Moscow, Russia be has become a disappointment for Fiji javelin thrower Leslie Copeland. The 25-year-old threw a distance of 72.3 meters to finish last in his group. Um, I did not do well. I, uh, I was way below my uh, personal best. I think it's just one of those days you come in, you feel great, but uh, you just 
I just couldn't put everything together. So I'm a bit disappointed. Uh, but uh, it's a good motivation for me to go back home and uh, work harder. Managed to look on the bright side. It's always good to come to big events like this. Uh, it means that uh, that uh, we are recognized in, uh, in the IWF. Uh, in, in IWF, so it's good for me to, to represent my country here. And uh, likewise, uh, for people here in Russia to get to know that, uh, that there's a country called Fiji. So I'm proud to represent Fiji to this meeting. His best throw ever was at the London Olympics, where he threw 80.19 meters to rank 13th in the world. Fine weather was experienced across the country today with the usual suspects, Suva and Savu Savu, having some cloud cover. Lombasa was the hottest at 31 degrees. The good weather is expected to continue tomorrow. And looking into next week, good news for hibiscus goers, fine weather is forecasted. The headlines again. Thousands turn out to the official opening of the Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus Festival. Government revamps education loan scheme. And the first BOG semi-finals continues with Lombasa and Ba still locked at Nilol. This week's poll question. Who should be held responsible for the latest rugby protest? FRU, unions or teachers? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's it from the newsroom tonight. Nimbula, Medango Nimilote in Nisorotamboa. Namakao Minoru can own a Vekavi Muniti Kino Vakarambuka. Roma Menavia Sama can be book of Barotakin in Rekomalolo and Radio Fiji one and a Wong Gani Pioniano. Gay Namakio Kina. Jahahu Piarka Basira or Rishto Ki Kushbu for he apta up Nagarsan Sar. Join me on Garsan Sar Monday to Friday, nine AM till twelve PM. Only on Radio Fiji 2.